In this video, we're going to look at evaluating a limit that allows us to utilize a very well-known trig limit while evaluating the limit itself. The first question that we ask ourselves when we are asked to evaluate a limit is, can we pass to the limit? What that means is, are we allowed, or can we rather, plug in the value that our variable is approaching into our function to figure out what our limit is? If we can do that, we know what our limit is and we don't have to worry about all this other stuff. But if, in order to do that, we actually need to plug it in and do some work to figure that out. But in this case, we get tangent of 11 times 0, or tangent of 0, which tangent of 0 is 0, and we get the same result on the bottom. Sine of 3 times 0 is sine of 0 or 0. So we get 0 over 0, or an indeterminate form. When we get an indeterminate form, we know of some procedures to use to try to manipulate our function that we're evaluating the limit of, namely factoring and multiplying by the conjugate in most cases will work. But in this case, they won't. We don't have anything to factor and we don't have a really a conjugate to multiply by. There's nothing really we can use. But we know that with trig functions, we can do some manipulations of the trig functions themselves and break them down to use maybe their parts that they break into to maybe more closely evaluate the limit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mess with this function that we have here, this tangent of 11x over sine of 3x, and break it down a little bit to see what pieces make up this puzzle. So we have tangent of 11x over 1 times 1 over sine of 3x. In this step, all I do is I broke down the original fraction into the product of two other fractions that split the numerator and the denominator in two. What we can also do is we can take this tangent of 11x and split it into its sine over cosine parts. And when I do that, I'm also going to do in the same step is move sine of 11x over 1 into one fraction and multiply it by 1 over cosine of 11x. Taking care of that, so we have now three pieces to deal with. Now that we have this, something that we can try to do is use the well-known limits for trig that we have here. We see it closely represented here and somewhat represented here. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. But we see this and we notice that in order to use this limit result here, the argument of our trig function has to match whatever's in the opposite half of our fraction. Here we have sine of 11x and here we have over one. So in order to bring that over 11x into the mix of what we're dealing with, we're gonna multiply this function by something over 11x. And when I say something over 11x, we're also gonna to have to multiply the numerator by that 11x because what we do to the denominator of this function, of this product of fractions here, we also have to take care of doing it in the numerator of the fraction. So when we multiply 11x here, we also have to multiply 11x in the numerator. Now, we also see that this one over sine of three x closely represents what we have going on here, but it's a flipped version of the fraction. What we can use is a common result known as, or it goes by the name or the saying of, the limit of the reciprocal is the reciprocal of the limit. So what that means is, is if we have limit as x approaches zero of x over sine of x, the limit of that is the reciprocal of this original limit, namely one over one or one. So if you see the form sine of something over that same something or something over sine of that same something, both of those limits evaluate to one. So we can use that and use the same kind of thinking as we did here and bring in a factor of three that we need for the numerator to match here because we already have the x right here, right? We already brought this x in for the first part here when we multiplied to figure out this over 11x and we brought this in. We brought this 11x in the numerator so that x is already taken care of, but what we do to the numerator, we also have to multiply to the denominator. So this is what we have going on here. We've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. So it's mainly just a specialized version of one. We're using that cool little math trick that we know that as long as we multiply something by a version of one, every mathematical principle that we know still holds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use another property of math, namely that multiplication of real numbers is commutative to allow us to move things from this that we're multiplying by into our original function so we can use this limit here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this x times three 
and move it to this far fraction, this right fraction here, and we're going to move 11 times x into this front fraction. So let's rewrite what we just did there. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 11x over 11x times 1 over cosine of 11x times 3x over sine of 3x. And all this is being multiplied by now a factor of 11 over 3. That's what we have left over after we moved in certain parts of our multiplication out here. We're left with this 11 over 3, what we have going on here. Now, when we see something like this, where we have a lot of functions being multiplied together, we tend to think, can we use the product law for limits? The only stipulation we have to satisfy is we have to know that as x approaches the value we're given here, namely 0 in this case, do each of these limits exist on their own? We've already established that this left one and the right one, they both already exist because they're known trig results that we have here. The only question now is this one. Does this limit of 1 over cosine of 11x as x approaches 0 exist? So let's do a little pass to the limit test on 1 over cosine of 11x. Has some scratch work over here and see if it works out. So limit as x approaches 0, 1 over cosine of 11x. What this is going to be is 1 over cosine of 11 times 0, or 1 over cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 evaluates to be 1, so we get 1. So this limit on its own exists. So we know that each piece of this exists, so we can take the individual limits and multiply the results together. What we're doing is using another kind of phrase, kind of like the reciprocal, the limit is the limit of the reciprocal, and vice versa. Here, what we're saying is that the limit of the products is the product of the limits. So what we're doing is we're taking the limit of each piece individually, and after we evaluate those limits, we're able to multiply them together to give us the limit of our original function. Sine of 3x. And all of these limits are being multiplied by a factor of 11 thirds. Okay, so let's go through and evaluate these. The argument of the trig function matches what's on the bottom. We're allowed to use this result here. So know this first limit evaluates to 1. The second one we just evaluated to become 1. The third one, again, has the same thing on the other half of the fraction as we do with the argument of the trig function. The reciprocal of the limit is the limit of the reciprocal. So we have this. And then this is all being multiplied times 11 over 3. So it works out that 1 times 1 times 1 times 11 over 3, our limit is 11 over 3.